we are going. What's going on with everybody? It is your boy Eric, aka Young Guy, coming to you live in the, in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you a real, raw, rugged. And I got a special guest on the other line. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who do we have here today? This is Reggie Coles. I am a content creator, a entertainer, a musician, a producer. I, I pretty much been doing it all for the last ten plus years. So. I'm just happy to be on with you, Eric, and um, yeah, I'm excited to get it started. Hey, man, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. Just, uh, you know, just rebranding constantly, right? Um, and making sure that I have the tools to go on into my next journey as being a 30-year-old. My birthday is in like in a, in a couple of weeks, so just, you know, basically rebranding and, you know, pushing forward. Happy early birthday, man, first of all. Happy appreciate it, boss. Appreciate it. Birthday. Appreciate it. I feel like I've been seeing you for uh, all of my life. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I've been seeing you since Vine, and I was on Vine at a very, uh, very young age. So to see you say you're about to turn 30 is like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Like I remember, yeah. <clears throat> I remember, I remember when I seen Tyler the Creator was turning 30. I was like, man, this is. I remember he was like a, a teenager. Now he's in his 30s. That's so crazy. Like, yeah. It's like with you, it's like, man, I remember he was, he was a teenager on the internet. Now, he, now he's 30. He's been turned 30. That's, for sure. that's, so how does that feel for, for sure. you? Like, I'm watching you, but you being you, you ever think about that? Like, man, it's been a long time. Definitely. Um, and, and, and you know how, how this industry goes. Um, when I first started, I mean, there was, you know, guys like King Batch and Daystorm, and they were on YouTube way before me. So they're, they're the real OG. Like before, this was even a, a thing, right? Um, but even getting on Vine and understanding that this is a whole new wave of micro content creating, uh, to understand that at 19 years old when I started, um, I felt like it was an opportunity for me to not only showcase my talent, but really put in the work. If you're really creative and people like what you put out, they'll, they'll fuck with it, right? Um, so, but thinking about you know, all the different videos and the different concepts I was doing in six seconds, it's all a blur to me, bro. It really truly is. Um, but just understanding that this will all pay off in the long run and even just explaining my mother, like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this six second video thing over here. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, this is going to be the new wave of, you know, people creating content in this particular manner. So, it's been an incredible journey, bro, and I'm just excited to just enter that next chapter in my life and, you know, hopefully get into some uh, some production type of stuff, too. It's crazy you say, like, it's like a blur because it was a blur to you, but, like, for a lot of people, like, those vines, like, they remember, like, they remember it so vividly. They remember when they were, like, when they saw it or they remember it. It's like a nostalgic thing. You know how you think about, like, yeah. a TV show or something? Like, somebody makes, like, an old vine of yours and be like, dang, like, I remember I was in seventh grade watching these videos yeah. you know because you know people do I this, a lot of those the people do the compilations on youtube where they like make a big compilation of all your videos like here here are all reggie's vines from 2014 yeah. or whatever so people will, like go back and watch those and be like dang like i remember like this mom like it takes them back to where they were so it's so funny that it's a blur to you but for somebody else that's that didn't even make the content they they remember it vividly yeah you know like that's yeah. it's crazy how the brain works that's just crazy for sure for sure and like it's hundreds maybe thousands of six second concepts is really kind of ridiculous to explain like what were you thinking it was almost like if you weren't if you didn't understand the formula you didn't understand what people gravitated to you didn't understand the algorithm you didn't understand um what what was in at that particular point uh it, it's really hard to explain that's why it was kind of like a it felt like a switch when at when it, when the platform first came out it was been a year before i started making videos mm -hmm. but eric dunn um and i always use this example he was the first one to reach a million followers on the platform mm -hmm. and i believe he did a, a vine meetup like a random vine meetup where he was saying hey i'm gonna be in, in this park in florida come meet me it's gonna be dope and this was last minute like and then 30 minutes later like 1200 1500 people showed up and it automatically clicked in my head like 
these are real people, yeah. right? Like, this is not just some numbers on it. These are real people that showed up. I got to get on this soon, you know, before. What if I keep watching Eric Dunn videos and then now there's an other creators popping up to a point where it's over-exaggerated, which we're kind of in right now. We'll probably get into that a little bit later. Um, but at the time, I'm like, man, if I could get my followers up, and I can get to a point where I have a real fan base. This is probably me having leverage as far as, you know, uh, negotiating deals for brands because of the fact that this is such a new wave of, of making content. I can be one of those people. So the fact that I'm honored to say that I'm one of the top 100 viners that ever were on the platform, that is an amazing milestone for me. Um, and hey, round of applause for you, brother. Let's get a round of applause for oh, you for that right now. You know what I'm saying, man? Thank you. you know yeah, what I'm saying? You deserve amazing. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so just just having that opportunity, bro, and just understanding that, like I said, at, at 19 years old, um, I, I've, I've always been light years ahead of, of things before it happens. Um, so it, I guess it's just one of those characteristics of me that I, I'm blessed to have. So, like, I think it's very easy in general when being on the internet to not realize that the other people that you're interacting with or that you're watching on the internet are, like, real people. Like, it's very easy to not realize that. That's why you see comments of people commenting crazy things that they might not say in real life because it's like, oh, this isn't a real... I'm, I'm just typing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or, they'll say, or, or they'll just say, it's just the internet, you know? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you seeing him... Which, funny enough, like, because like you said, you, you kind of have to see these type of things to realize, oh, these are real people. Like, he has a real base. Funny enough, he's from the same city that I'm from. He's from Jacksonville. And I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in Jacksonville. So, nice. He, yeah. So, he's like, it's funny to, to see that and realize, like, dang, like, not only is this a real nigga, but everybody else are real people that's coming behind yeah. him. So, that, that, oh. that, so, he was kind of the catapult for you to realize, like, this could be like an actual career. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was the... He was the first, man. I know there's other people that came on the platform, especially like King Batch is the number one Viner. Um, and he was killing at one point. But really, it was really nobody around. I know there was uh, uh, Will Sasso. I think that's his name. Yeah. He was on there first, too. Um, but just it was so weird and quirky. And it was like. Do I pursue this? Is this even a thing? But once I saw people showed up to a random Vine meetup, <laughs> right? Like, that was when, like, these people are real. This is not bots. Like, people are like, oh, my gosh, I can have an opportunity to meet Eric Dunn. I'm going to just go, right? And the fact that you even had a turnout of that many people yeah. showed me that, like, dude, get on it. You don't want to miss this boat. Right. And, you know, I know most of us, we like to sit back and kind of wait and see what's going to happen. But sometimes it's just best to just go for it, even if you look crazy in the moment, um, only because that nobody really shuns the person that goes first. Mm. Right. <clears throat> nobody really cares about like, oh, man, like when, when a person um, says, like, oh, oh, who wants to. Uh, who wants to be the first person to get on this ride, right? And if it goes wrong, right? If you go first and it goes wrong, right? Like, nobody's going to shun you and say, like, well, haha, you look stupid. But I was man enough or woman enough to go first, though, right? And figure it out on the way, you know? And I think it's just me understanding that was the, the biggest change in my life yeah. by far. I will, I will say, to be fair, I, I do think black people might shun that person for getting on that ride without, uh, you know, so... Yeah. Let's talk about it. Because <laughs> because uh, I was about to say, like, because uh, you say, like, the first the person that goes first, they won't get shunned. They might get shunned because uh, them people that went down in the submarine, uh, you, you remember last year they went down the submarine? <laughs> Nigga was sure. definitely on the head. But what if it went right, though? It didn't, so that's why people were on the head. <laughs> and they lost their lives, they unfortunately. Did. They did, they did. Um... But, it, you know, it's certain things for sure. Like, it, I, I don't think... It, forget the submarine imploding. I don't understand why you would want to go see the Titanic knowing how many people have died on there. 
right? Knowing how many people, that's almost like a graveyard, yeah. right? It's a, it's a respect out of the people that have lost their lives, right? And families have been altered, I'm sure. Um, just playing with that, like, th- those are spirits. Those are, you know what I mean? Like, for all I know, we don't know what happened. They, they just saying, like, hey, man, we saw a little a, a little body part, it imploded, right? But who's to say that, you know, a spirit had, you know, drugged them down into somewhere else? Yeah. I don't know. Nobody knows really truly what happened. Um, but, you know, something like that, yeah, probably not a great idea. You, you're you from Jersey, right? I am. So in the South, there's a bunch of plantations here still. And yeah. people, vi- there's like plantation, like, uh, tours. I don't know if you know about mm-hmm. these, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like... There's this is like this place called Amelia's Plantation, I think it's called, like around here in Florida, it like close by Jacksonville. And you can do a little tour and they're like, All right, hey, here's the plantation, you know what I'm saying? Here's the kitchen. Oh, you you, 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 you wanna see what Big Mama cooking them grits? I think you what Big Mama cooking them grits over here in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Oh no. He go Big Mama bonnet. You know, they they got memorabilia of the slaves and stuff, they got the slave yeah. master, they got all tight, they got the oh, you you wanna see the map this ain't the master bedroom, this massa bed. Room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they got all of that going on. So, so when you talk about like not visiting places where they might have like spirits at or whatever, uh, people do that. People do that. It's funny. The college I went to, this is a. I mean, this is such a conspiracy theory that I cannot find any evidence that this was true. Let's but hear it. I went to uh, this college. My the first college I went to was FSCJ uh, Community College, and they say that because it was one thing. It, it was like three things. It was like. Uh, the Hearts Bridge was named after a slave master, which it was. It's, it's a bridge here called the Hearts Bridge. It was something else they said that wasn't true. So then the third thing was about the college. I'm like, so they got one true thing, one false thing. I don't know if it's true about the college, but the college, they say, uh, we used to be where it's at, used to be a plantation. And they built the college over the plantation. And I was like, that's crazy if true. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking on... on, on I'm walking on... I feel like I'm walking on slave souls or something. That's weird. Like, I don't know if I want to be... Because I'm pretty... I don't... I don't know, like, I don't know if you know this, but, like, what happened to when slaves died? Did they bury the slaves? Like, where where did the slaves go? I don't know if you know the answer to that. I don't, this is a legitimate I question. I don't know the answer to that either, brother. That's what I'm saying. Are, are, they, are they underneath this this concrete that I'm walking on? That was just weird to me. So, if that is true, that is wild. But, uh, I don't know well, where I'm going sure, with that. That's yeah, crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's been stories where, yeah, like, they will destroy black towns, right? And then put water over the town, and now it's called a lake. Right, I can't remember the lake name, um, what it's called, but yeah, people will go there to like have a picnic and get in the water and they drown. Like, hello, <laughs> look at all them. Like, what? <laughs> like, why would you? Why would you do that? It, that? That's a sanctuary, right? Like, that's a that that's a place that's. I mean, pretty much, it's a a, a town that's under the water, bro. Like, and those are people. And spirits and all that other extra stuff, like in the water, and you're getting in the water. And I don't understand how I, that makes sense. I will say, white people like to play. White people like white people like to play oh, with something they should yeah, not yeah, uh, play with. Do, bro. <laughs> like, why the hell? Hey, man, we're gonna go and, and, and go down and see the Titanic. Hey, we're gonna go to the lake and just you know swim over fucking Central. Where like we're gonna swim over black towns and nothing's gonna happen to us. Like, hey, all right, bro. White people like to play. There's a uh, there's another city in Jacksonville, St. Augustine, not in Jacksonville, but in Florida, St. Augustine, Florida, which is like one of the most like historic, really cities like in in the country because it's so old and it's so much like like it's so much stuff in St. Augustine that's still there from like the 1700s that hasn't been touched. So like there's like a bunch of like old schools and you could like do a tour of these schools and like they're like supposed to be haunted or whatever. They're like from the 1800s, the early 1900s, and there's still desks in there that haven't been touched. There's still like chalkboards in there that still haven't been touched and people go around in like St. Augustine sometimes like if you ever look at uh, TV shows that like let's go see the most haunted stuff a lot of that stuff they'll go to St. Augustine because there's so much old stuff that hasn't been touched in damn near centuries so uh, and, and I will say the common denominator a lot of people who want to go see those things same color as napkin <laughs> same color as napkin they are white people they are white people so uh, hey I will say white people are they they ain't scared you know what i'm saying white people at all because hey, i always Here. say white people I, I, if 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 they're not scared of, of ghosts 
They not scared of the cold. White people, I'm not gonna lie, they are superior to cold weather. They will walk around with a shirt sure. off. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, don't care. They ain't superior to black people, but they ain't superior to cold weather. They they will defeat the hell <laughs> out of some cold weather. You ain't lying, bro. Hey, but you from Jersey? So, you from Jersey? So you you probably used to the I hate cold weather, like snow, all like that's. Mm-mm. I left Jersey to come to <laughs> LA, so that's to let you know <laughs> I ain't with the cold. I I had to shovel snow. I ain't, yeah, that's tough, man. And in my, uh, uh, there's a bunch of my friends that like slipped on ice, and I ain't, nah, I ain't with that cold weather, bro. That's that's a little too much for me. But I dealt with it for the last 18 years, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then I was like, man, I gotta find a way to get out of LA, man, because. How, oh, I can't do this. How was the culture shift for movements from somewhere like New Jersey to LA? <sighs> I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Um, so let's. So I, I, I was in Jersey, and all the way up till eighteen, and just even. My my life is a little bit interesting because um, I like to tell black people I don't really have a a struggle story for real. Like I've always pretty much had what I need. I, I can say you know higher middle class. Um, But I was going to school in the hood, right? Mm. Like, so I saw the dynamic between, you know, people that, like, my friends that didn't have much, right? And then me just being out and being on the outside looking in of, like, oh, it makes sense on why you were acting the way you were acting, right? Like, you know, you know, fiending for my my chips that I wasn't going to eat, right? Like, but you don't even have, you don't even know if your mother's going to be home for you to have a meal, so that's why you were making sure that you had my chips, which I was more than welcome to to, to give to them because I knew I was going to have a sandwich at home, mm-hmm. right? Um, so just growing up in that dynamic of just kind of um, being a, an observer uh, of watching people's different situations and lives, it almost kind of made me humble myself because I had probably one of the best cards um, to life as far as having the different dynamics of you know knowing my my father and knowing my my mom and knowing my grandparents that love me and my uncles and aunts you know like so I always had that support system which goes to say that at around 17 I felt like I was being coddled and I wanted something that was real rap raw I want the what is life real yeah. right so when I was applying for schools, which I only applied for two, which was, um, well, I'm not going to say the names of the school because hell with them. But I applied for two schools, um, and I got into both of them. And I chose one, which was in Philadelphia. And I was like, okay, like, I'm not too far from home. But at the same time, I can still get, like, I'm on my own. Like, I don't have nobody to be like, oh, mom, they told me. Blah, blah, blah. I don't have that. Yeah. I got to figure it out. I was always that person. Like, I need to just be on the field, right? Because I can sit back and observe all day. It's, it's nothing better than you being on the ground and you got to make real life decisions. Yeah. Um. So I was doing a lot of different stuff uh, in the program that I was in. Um, I studied uh, stage performance, which is, you know, learning the diction of classical music and understanding different languages, um, knowing how to read music and play piano. So I've always been like a a musical head. Um, But I was like, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get there and I'm going to make sure that all my teachers know me. I'm going to be in every program, every event. So hopefully I can get some more financial aid. (laughs) You feel what I'm saying? Get some more financial aid so I can stay at the school. Right. So. My first year was pretty much taken care of because of my mom. Um, but I was like, I got to I gotta do my due diligence and, like, you know, move around and make sure people know me. I did all that. And motherfuckers like, yo, you need anything, let me know. Right? So I'm like, cool. they like, yo, Reg, hey, we need a, we need a freshman. We, we need you to bring out your songs. You know what I'm saying? Could you come in at, like, 5 p.m.? Sure, I got you. Go in there. I'm doing all this different stuff. Right? Fast forward all the way to the to, to tuition, right? And I'm like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay at the school, but if you can help me get some financial aid, you know, all that stuff I was giving you, 
right? It's time to pay. It's time to pay back. Oh, well, let me, uh, maybe you should, uh, talk to this person. Yeah, talk to that, talk to them, and then if they don't call you, come come to me. All right, cool. Went to this person. Uh, hmm. Uh, I'll send an email. I'll send an email, let them know that you're looking for some, what was it, fi financial aid. <laughs> okay, cool. We're, we're going to get you to, so everybody's giving me the whole runaround, and I'm starting to understand it, like, ah, uh, ah, that made me look like an idiot, right? Like, all this extra stuff y'all wanted me to do, but when it's time to... <laughs> get back so that's how I understood the dynamic of white people right that's great to know um, so then I understood I couldn't go to the school anymore so I had to go to school in state but in the process I found Vine right and over that summer which was 2013 over that summer I was shooting a lot of videos um, and I was just building my followers up my mom didn't really know what I was what I was doing at the at the time but I was like, I'm just gonna build my followers and just try to go to school in state and see how that works. But the the school that I went to um, in my sophomore year was just the music program was just trash, mm. bro. Like it was like going from I don't know, going from the Lakers to the Portland Trailblazers. It was bad, man. <laughs> like I'm like, I don't know if I could do this, right? So at the time. This was around like October of 2013. I told my mom, hey, I think I want to kind of pursue this this thing I've been working on. Um, it's called Vine. And I want to kind of do this full time. <clears throat> and she was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Um, so I had to literally dead ass, like, really break it down to her of like because I know what her question was going to be how are you going to sustain yourself being a living adult doing six second videos the concept is already ridiculous so I had to go and do research of like well how does Daystorm get paid right well um, how, do, how do the people that are already doing it getting paid and one of the things that I landed on was brand advertising um, doing YouTube AdSense, right? Building an audience um, to a point where you can start promoting different brands and stuff. So once I kind of broke that down of like what that looks like for me and for her and what my vision and my goal was, my roadmap, she was like, all right, I'll, I'll give it to you. You got one whole year to get something done. And if nothing happens, you're just taking your black ass back to school. That is fair enough for me. Right, I, I've I can I can deal with that. Lucky for me, I didn't even need the whole year. I say between October going into February, March of 2014. This is when uh, uh, I got a manager, and then I had um, Brian Robbins reach out to me. He's pretty much um, he produced a lot of uh, uh, Eddie Murphy movies. Um, he's responsible for Keenan and Kel, all that. Um, I mean, pretty much responsible for our, our whole childhood, yeah. essentially. Um, and they wanted me to kind of shoot content for them on their YouTube channel called Awesomeness TV uh, to to basically kind of have like a token black guy, pretty much. Because I was the only black guy on the roster. And the rest is history. Um, I've just been out here um, shooting a bunch of different content, work with amazing people. Um, and then just pivoting myself, of course, going into the brand, the brand advertising and constantly creating different storytelling ideas. So it's been a journey and I'm just happy that I'm still able to sustain myself um, and just learn a different every just learn the business along the way. Right. Because I was 19. My mom didn't know the business. She's pretty much my momager, to be honest with you. So we just thugging it out. Yeah. Right. Like, and, you know, we get a deal or something like that and we could have possibly got more great now we know right so it's just a constant of just retailing and and kind of figuring out what we would what i would want out of my career first of all congratulations man you know what i'm saying <laughs> for making that transition because there's a lot of people from that vine era who had immense amount of just like followers and popularity who aren't really around anymore or they are around but they're yeah. struggling to get that <clears throat> 
those viewerships, those likes that they were getting from Vine, it didn't really translate to Instagram or YouTube yeah. or TikTok or whatever the social media is. You're still getting millions and millions of views yeah. off of your stuff. And it's so funny because I'm a nigga. I don't even like really be like watching other niggas views and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I'm watching like I literally only found this out. I didn't realize you were still getting that many likes and views. Like I followed you <laughs> still. Like I've been following you since. I, I could, I'm pretty sure I can pull it up right now. But I've been following you for forever. I never really pay attention to that. And I looked and I said, this nigga, what is it? He got 7,000 views on this. Already. He got, I mean, yeah, yeah, he got 7,000 yeah. comments. So, like, I've yeah. been following you for the longest. And I never realized that. So, salute to you for, for, for still getting the back. See, look, following you since 2015. So, didn't even. I, 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 but Yo, that's that, no, 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 that just like Instagram. You. Though. That's just Instagram, though. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. following you in Vine before 2015. So, I, I've been. Oh, I appreciate the support, bro. I, I, all these years, yeah, for just, sure. Just sticking with me, man. Because I've done a lot of different things, right? I, I, I started the music, and we'll we'll talk about that. Um, started started doing the comedy videos, and that's another thing I want to uh, bring out to people. Whoever wants to make content, you, of course, you got to find what you're good at. But at the same time, like I know we have like our own imagination of what we want our careers to go in and for me like I've always been a musician at heart my music is the foundation of my content right like and I know people might be like well you make funny videos well let's talk about those funny videos even the latest post that I put out it's still dealing with music Mm. right it's me singing my uncle videos are dealing with me singing mr johnson arrangements right learning the learning the harmonies right even my pastor riley that i used to do all of those chords and 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 church chords and stuff that's all music my entire scope it might be funny but the foundation of everything is my music right so even excuse me even just starting I wanted to kind of pivot into like, well, how do I become a music artist, mm. right? I want to be a musician. I want to be known as an artist. But it kind of panned out into me being a, a hybrid of all of that, right? Not necessarily just music, but being a, a breath of fresh air of like, we don't really have a person that's kind of integrating both. And it almost kind of comes out dope besides it being funny <laughs> right which is amazing for me and i i leaned into that right so and, and to my point creators kind of have a way of like well i want you guys to love me for this but they love you for this lean into it like why not bro um and me being younger understanding now like again about to turn 30 like it's it's okay for for you to just accept how people want to accept you, right? Like, don't go against the grain just because of what your selfish reason is. Because yeah. that's essentially all it is. No, for sure. A lot of people definitely have a interest in multiple things. and But let's say they have an interest mm-hmm. in five things. But this this one thing they really want to be noticed for. And niggas might have more interest in those other four things that they like but it's like I want to be noticed for this not the other four I like those four those are cool but I really want to be noticed for this but you combine those things you know what I'm saying and it's like niggas don't even sometimes probably even realize that they like both they're like man this video funny subconsciously not even realizing like but this nigga actually saying too you know what I'm saying so it's like uh, uh, it's like the the best of both worlds essentially you know and I kind of want to transition into singing right now so sure let me take a step back into elementary school this is me in elementary school I was in a chorus and we always had to audition every single year for chorus elementary school so there's this guy Earl Robinson, Hall of Fame ugly nigga. Just, I mean, just world-renowned ugly nigga. I mean, <laughs> universally looked upon as an ugly-ass nigga, man. <laughs> I love Earl. Earl knows he is a ugly nigga, man. <laughs> so, Earl, you'll under, when I tell this story, you'll be like, only an ugly-ass nigga would do this. So, we would have to get called upon one by one 
to sing a song, and that was the audition. So we have to sing in front of the chorus teacher, Ms. Shaw, and the other um, students in there. So you go up there, sing, da da da, sit down, go up there, sing, da da, sit down. It's time for Earl Robinson to sing. Earl Robinson gets up there. You know what Earl Robinson gets up there and sings? Oh, God. Earl Robinson, he clears his throat like one true ugly nigga would do. He says, <clears throat> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, I, I. And he's, <laughs> he's doing the entire oh, album. Get this nigga done. <laughs> Nah, he's at these extra runs and stuff. Oh, and I mean, I was in tears, dying, laughing. <laughs> I was like, dog, you are stupid, bro. That was so funny to me. And connecting that to you, that's the uncle videos. Adding yeah. extra runs in the song that Hell don't yeah. need the runs. Adding extra <laughs> words in the song that's not even there. Like, that is the unk videos. And I feel yeah. like... It's funny because this is an alphabet that he was doing, but uh, the first thing coming to mind is the B B B B L B B B B L. When he's doing the B B L Drizzy song, and it's just like so, so, so hilarious. And uh, yeah, man, you and Earl Robinson, man, same guy, same guy. Can you hear me? <laughs> 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 yeah. But no, that that was great. But um, the singing videos, bro. I mean, Chef's Kiss. Those are so good, bro. Those are so good, man. So good. Thank you, boss. What I made, appreciate that, man. What inspired the specifically the Unk videos? What's, what what inspired those? Um, so I've always been in situations where people always want to kind of like what you said, right? I, like I'll be in talent shows, and um, there will be a comp. So I went to a, uh, in high school. I went to um, a performing arts school. So. We had a bunch of singers. We had a bunch of artists. We had a you know a, a bunch of uh, musicians and band and all this other extra stuff. So there is a constant of competition, and particularly in vocalists. Um, me, I'm the type of person where like every time I sing, I didn't really have to do much because my I guess the people just love my tone that much. Mm. But what people would try to do is overdo me. Right, like it was one one uh, one guy, uh, he was older than me, like by a year, but his name was Justin. And shout out to Justin, but he would do, he would belt so hard, like he would try to literally out sing anybody, and it always comes off as being forceful. Mm. So, I, I but me understanding that, like, okay, less is more. And, and and that's my my formula, right? Like I don't try to do too much, but at the same time, like just having those type of people around, people do enjoy it. It just has to be in a in a way where it's almost annoying. So I was like, all right, I was in I was in my car, and it was a particular song. I want to say it was uh uh uh. It was a, a weekend song. Uh, I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. So I was like, my radio at the time wasn't working at all. So I was like, yo, what would be funny if like you have a person in the passenger seat just singing crazy as hell while I'm driving? So I'm like, let me just see if that concept even works. And this is buying time. So I was like, I, I, I did the song and then I shot the video and I looked at it and I was like, is this funny? This is funny. Do people want to see, because I'm going back to in my head of like, people don't really like obnoxious singing, right? So I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. It was just posted. And it went crazy. So they had like a comedy page back then, right? So if you post at a particular time around like three or four ish, you have a chance to be like top 10 and that's amazing because that means any person that gets on the app they're seeing those first 10 videos so you're just shot up to like top three you good money that means you're gonna get 5,000 10,000 12,000 followers so I just kind of posted it and then I just put my phone away because I, I don't I don't like I don't like seeing the comments that's mm -hmm. another thing about me like because you can get into uh 
a wormhole of like people saying like, man, this shit ain't funny. How the fuck you like this guy? This guy sucks. Everything he do is ass. Meanwhile, you got like 2,000 comments saying like, yo, this shit is hilarious, right? But you're like, man, fuck you. Fuck you, man. You ain't got shit. What's, what's your Abby page? You, <laughs> I go in that mode, right? Um, so when I posted it and then like three hours later, I went up to it. And I clicked on the comedy page and I scrolled one time and my video was number two. So I was like, yo, people really rocking with this. So I was like, all right, this is a birth of a character, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, wait, I have a thing going here where like personas, right? Characters lean into it, bro. Like go to Amazon, get yourself a couple wigs, uh, 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 get, get you some mustaches that was the birth of my dad character right like just do a pretty much like a one man show at the time cause you know people ain't wanna people saw my followers but they ain't wanna do like nah I don't wanna be in the video like alright bruh so I gotta do this shit myself right cause I'm the only person that has this vision anyway like it's just 6 second videos where is it gonna go nigga <laughs> <laughs> right so but at that time, like, just leaning into different characters and um, uh, uh, and understanding that, like, this is my pocket. This is my lane because mm -hmm. nobody is doing this at that particular time. Now, you know, everybody has a character and everybody has a persona that they, you know, like to, to portray. So I'm just happy that I'm, I'm still around. You, you know, it's funny. I will shout him out because he was one of the niggas that was, like, had a few characters on his uh vine he doesn't he he does like these type of videos but he had like actual characters at this time and a lot of niggas don't yeah. really remember him from vine but desi banks i don't know if you remember desi from vine i know a lot of people know he's been around for a long time yeah. like yeah. a really long time yeah. and i'm like i'm just so happy for him like i i, I even dc young fly too because He's been around for a while as well. Oh, for sure. Uh, and I, I'm just happy that they didn't get discouraged of, oh, I'm not popping on Vine, I'm not getting on Vine, and understood that like maybe another platform is for me. And that happens all the time, right? For some people, it could be YouTube, right? Like, huh, how come these guys could just make six-second videos and get millions of views, but I got to make 20, 20 minutes of video? That's, that happens, bruh. And... And who's to say that micro content creators don't have that same issue, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in the in in reverse, right? I can't get people to watch a minute of my shit, right? Because of the fact that they've seen me in a certain area for, you know, quite a while. So I'm just I'm just so happy for the people that which were making videos just like me, right? I just had my, my lucky shot. And, and, and had millions of views and millions of followers at the time and they didn't give up they didn't give up at all they they still continue to put out content and then once they found something they ran with it bring your ass here boy right the 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 uh white air forces versus black air force is genius bro but them having the repetition of creating videos is almost like second nature to them yeah. right they don't even have to it doesn't discourage them if their video doesn't do well because it hadn't done well <laughs> back then, yeah. right? So now, once they got the, the 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 repetition of just putting out content, understanding understanding their formula, the chemistry of how they do their videos, that is the beauty of it all, right? Yeah. And you know, I know some people kind of like what we talked about. You know, they they had one thing and it was working, and you know, they try to transfer it into somewhere else and it doesn't work. What's your ability to pivot, right? That's that's a tough one in itself, right? Coming up with new concepts. How many times should you post so where you don't burn yourself out too? This is all all things people don't consider when people are just watching the videos for however many minutes or seconds, right? Like, because me, at the time, yeah, I was putting out three or four videos a week. Now? Bro, no. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> goddamn not. Right, because I, I got, uh, there's other layers of things that people might not see, right? People might be like, well, damn, what happened to Reggie? Nothing. It's just the algorithm now, yeah. right? Like, the things that you like, the things that you, you know, like, that's, 
that's probably one of the reasons, right? But if you go back on my page, I'm still posting. I'm still getting, you know, like, damn, you still posting? I ain't, I ain't seen none of your shit, man. Instagram got me fucked up. Like, yeah, bro, that's just the way of the world. And I have to understand that too, right? Like, it's not my content. It's, it's what the algorithm picks up, right? Now I got to understand what time to post. Now I got to put three seconds of a hook, right? I You need to understand a video without sound, mm. right? So, but these are all things to consider, you know, being a content creator and things are constantly changing all the time. So you got to be aware of like, Oh yeah, this might be a funny concept, but is it a funny concept for Instagram or a YouTube video or a movie or a, you know like yeah. so just just understanding that bro is is king. You know where you benefit at you your your content is it isn't one thing like you have the unk singing video you have singing videos in general yeah and then you have the videos where you do voiceovers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you got you got a video recently where you did the little airbender thing where you were hovering yep. over the water yeah that has yep. nothing to do with uh, music at all you know for the most right. part like that so somebody who may not be interested in the music videos they see the airbender video oh this this nigga funny i'm gonna follow him they might not be interested in the airbender video but this nigga saying no i'm gonna follow him off of that so yeah. for i feel like yep. it benefits you you're not making just one type of content you make content that is very varied out you know so uh multiple types of people could be following you for different reasons because one person might not even like the singing videos but they love when you do the voiceovers a nigga might not care when you do the voiceovers but they love when you're singing or they love they might not like this character but they follow you for this one character they love this character and then you got people that love everything you do you know what i'm saying so you so, so so you you covering everything for sure yeah, and, and that was one of one of the things me understanding too, right? Like I know when, when the algorithm first came out, the new algorithm with Instagram and stuff like that, when it first came out, people were like, Bring back Serpentine. We want Serpentine again. But think of it this way. If they're trying to understand how to get people to stay on the app, mm. right? at the end of the day we do not own these platforms their job is to make sure people stay on the application so we're gonna do what we have to do as far as doing such which means if you guys post something that the people like yes we're going to share this video put it in this room where three people might be interested in what you post and depending on their reaction right we're gonna show it to other people Right, because if it's a popular video or if it's a video that has something, the computer would understand that, like, okay, obviously this is something that people will want to to want to like, right? Mm-hmm. So the more uh, uh, time people watching it, rewatching it, like that gives them an idea of like, okay, this is good content, right? But if a person like me that wants to do a bunch of different things, what in the world is that? <laughs> Yo, iPhone. Hey, boy. You like y'all like doing a lot of exercise. So it was a thumbs up. Yeah, I'm about to say. I don't know if you seen the thumbs up a couple minutes ago. What was that? I don't know what's going on, Apple. But get it together. Anyway, um, but to to my point, the algorithm has a particular way of understanding what people likes, and it works in other people's favor. Well, everybody's favor if you want to be dynamic. Because like you said, one person might follow me because of this particular video. And they might only show those particular videos to them if it's if it's in that realm, right? If it's music, right? You can honestly see how many people are actually interested in the music, right? Now they have another thing where you can say, hey, uh, uh, type in what's good to get the, the link to my new song that I put out. Then you can really get in a real engagement of how many people are interested. Because just because you got two million views on something don't mean that you're gonna that's like gonna, gonna convert into dollars, mm-hmm. right? So getting people to you know comment a certain phrase word or something like that that could potentially be a buyer of what you're trying to sell, right? Because it's again there's all different types of content creators brands stores right 
and they all want to advertise their business in a way where they get sales. So you're going to have to have an algorithm that could kind of weed out what is a funny video, what is a Walmart post, what is a sponsored post. So we're just in an in a era where it's just now dynamic more than ever. Because when I started, it was just music and funny videos. Yeah. No, it's... It, That's it. With TikTok, there's like literally like every... Everything you can think about is being talked about on TikTok. So it's like yes. like the most... Like it's funny because like people who are into cars, you could be into a specific type of car. And you typed it in on TikTok, it'd be somebody talking about that a specific type of car from yep. 2004 on TikTok. And you'd be like, hey, I know people even care about this car. So yeah. the most niche stuff now is can 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 give you like the biggest following because For sure. you would Story think like... Time. Let me tell you how this man came up to me and slapped the hell out of me. <laughs> My, I just realized my husband crazy as hell. I had to divorce him. Like it is very, very the docu document or person saying, doom, 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 doom. Let me tell you about this crazy story of this man <laughs> slip, slicing people's heads off. Like, oh, okay. And you wind up watching it, right? Like you, oh my god, this is this is crazy as hell. So it's important to have the algorithm because of the fact that there's so many different types of ways to make content now. Um, so they have to understand who to show your video to yeah. and that's what you would want now think about it this way you're used to getting a million followers like in my era but now you're getting 20,000 but you gotta think of it this way there's 20,000 people that's interested in this particular content yeah right that's it that's a fact and another thing where you benefit from somebody could watch your singing videos be like dang this nigga sing do he make music oh mm -hmm. I like it. This 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 fashionista song hard. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. they dig deeper. Ah, ah, but I got time. That's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Bye bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, good song. And they they start to actually become a fan of For your sure. comedy. But now they're also a fan of your music. You feel me? So yeah. you could like kind of like cross platform if that make any sense. Like um mm -hmm. and 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 be big on multiple not even social media apps but streaming apps. Now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, not not your streaming is oh, going yeah. up along with your social media numbers. So. Um, yeah, you got it down packed, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro? Yeah, man. You got it down packed, and, and again, when I first started, I ain't, I ain't know nothing. Like, I ain't know how to negotiate. <laughs> I ain't know how to, like, I ain't know what was a fair price. What was, I just had to just go out there and do it. Yeah. Was it overwhelming? Yeah. <laughs> just like anything else. You got obligations. You got real life, your other life that people don't even think about. Well, I don't want to say don't care about i personally like to keep my stuff private uh only because of i'm protecting the people that i'm around right like i know i'm a face on the internet um and i want to protect that until they want to be on camera like my mom no 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 um my fiance like she talked about it but i want her to kind of like because once you once you go down this path like Ain't no going back. They know yeah. who who you are to me, and we start making videos and stuff like that. Like it's gonna be like I don't want to do this anymore. It'll, it'll be kind of difficult to say that because you're now you're gonna be a part of people's lives, mm -hmm. right? And then you're gonna be an example for people. How many stories that I got were like, "Yo, man, I was really on the brink of like just breaking up with my girl. It just wasn't working out, but it was one video, man. Like she was starting to play it and." We started laughing and then we kindled our relationship and I, I popped the question and we got two kids now, man. So shout out to you. The fact that I even, I'm just making content, yep. right? I'm not even understanding how I'm affecting people's real life. Just so, just bringing light, you know? Um, I, I, I am honored for, you know, people that are like, yo, man, like you inspired me to even start making videos. Mm -hmm. Like I looked at you and, I was like, man, you really doing? I think I could do it because you can. But it's just once you go down that road and it gets hard and pause and it gets difficult to a point where, like, damn, I don't, I don't know if I got it anymore. Like, you got to keep going because there's other people that didn't have that same opportunity as, as you. You got an iPhone, you got an idea, go for it, right? And don't stop. This goes back to the blur. When you're making it, it's kind of blurry. Like, damn, I forgot I made that video. 
But that yeah. one video probably changed somebody's entire life because man. they seen that video and they either could have been like, dang, man, I could do this. I think I could do exactly what he's doing. Or it could be like, man, I was depressed. And like finding your page and finding these string of videos, like, bro, you really brought me like light in a time where I didn't even see no light, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Changing people's lives is, is and like I said, just being a, a kid and at the time, just like, I didn't even know how to process this. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just making videos and, and changing people's lives in the process is always a blessing to me. You know, it's my favorite video, you just, a favorite video from you of you this year. What's up? The singing videos are, I love the singing videos. The singing videos probably are my favorite because I just love to hear people sing. You know what I'm saying? So just hearing the videos, I love them videos. But that's, I'm not going to lie, my favorite video got to be the Shannon Sharp video. That really? video is so <laughs> funny because the, him, that situation in general is already funny. Like him Hilarious. just. Hilarious. Like he did not want to be wrong. He he refused At to. All. <laughs> like was kind of just throwing straight bricks. Like the whole interview was like. Yo, he's really dead ass on this. Like he's throwing straight bricks. Like no rim, just straight bricks, bro. No, and no. I'm like. I gotta do a video about this. No research, just vibes. You know what I'm saying? Shot, right, which I, I shot out. Just vibing. Just vibing. Your so mom that, is white. <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> he's like, oh, well, well, she married a white man. She's like, no, he did not. That's so funny. That situation is already funny. But you acting it out, I think it's the very part where she married a white man. The, the, the way you did that is just, that's so funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that video! Yeah, that's probably my favorite video from you. And you got some, you got some great video. Like I said, that BBL Drizzy video, that BBL Drizzy video, is probably one of my favorite singing videos that you did. I, I laugh every time I see or think of that video. So yeah, man, you you've been on a roll this year, bro. Did did I break up? You my my my, my, my good? I'm I'm here I'm here now. What God. was that? What's going on? Hey, you, Apple just tripping today. It seemed like Apple is just Apple is having a time. Going crazy. Apple's going crazy. It's probably all that damn effects and stuff like that messing up my damn connection. Stop See. putting the effects on me. <laughs> a good game. But no, I was just saying that you got. I love that video, but you got so many videos to pick from because that BBL Drizzy video. That's one of my favorites. Like that BBL Drizzy video, the B B B B B B B. The way you broke that down, that was just amazing and. It made me want to ask you because, man, I, I, I done beat this to death in all the interviews where I interview like a, well, anybody in music really, but I just have to sing and bring it up to you because you be jamming in them videos. Niggas don't be jamming in their music no more. Like, you go back and listen to like older music, it's like, man, they were jamming. Now, not so much. And it's like, damn, I gotta go to a funny video to hear a nigga jamming. I can't go to uh, somebody who yeah. dedicated their whole life to being an R&B artist to hear that. Yeah, and that's interesting you said that. It's crazy. That's interesting that you said that. You might, have, you might have sparked something there. Because you're right. Nobody, uh... Everybody's trying to be too fucking cool, man. Like, I don't know what that is, bro. And I guess, like, you know... For, like, for, for me, right? Watching Will Smith growing up, I thought this guy was the coolest... I mean, all his roles that he trained was, was, was a cool guy. Yeah. Right? And, like, he's the one that, like, you know... He had the charisma, he had the look, he had the, um, you know, even Martin, right? Like, and you go, and Eddie Murphy too, like, but you go to understand it, like, yo, these guys were just as nerdy as me, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're just great at what they do, right? They're just super creative, and they have the ability to morph into these people that almost give them, like, a whole new persona, a whole new them, right? Like, doing the characters and doing... Um, and, and then as you grow up and you start to understand it, like, yo, he's he's a hunk. Like, <laughs> like he's just as clueless, you know what I mean? And and he's just as human as as anybody, you know. That's that's creating, um, uh, you know, different videos and content and stuff like that. So, I I've admired those guys because. They had to step into a realm 
like doing social media to like show their real selves mm-hmm. and I, and I, they felt like they had to do that at some point um, because you know hiding through a persona could be a, a it could be a good thing and a bad thing but I'm just happy that they're embracing social media in a way where they're constantly being active um, and they're constantly you know trying to you know go with the wave right that's mm-hmm. one of the most important things right like you know, I ain't doing that shit I, you know what I am I, I'm an A-list actor yeah but this is a this is a necessity though. You can touch the people in a way mm-hmm. where people get to get a little bit of understanding of like what your career was, right? Mm-hmm. And for you to be that vulnerable to do that in a in an era where like that was almost forbidden, right? Like no, when you do an interview, it needs to be a crazy massive interview. Yeah. Now we can just do some shit like this. Yeah. You on know, an iPhone, we chilling, we we vibing, talking it out. Um, and, and that's what people gravitate to more because you're human now. Yep. You know? You're not lying. I mean, boy, I've been having the sneeze for like the past five minutes and it just won't come out. Yeah, I've, been, <laughs> I've been trying to sniff and everything, but I just won't come up. Still won't come up. What is this? Pause that. What oh, God? Oh, boy. Take your time, now. Take your time. It's going to come. Boy, I thought that was it. But, um,. But no, I mean, like you said, somebody like Will Smith, if you look at his Instagram, it seemed like him and his team really understand social media and what the people want to see. Like, Will Smith, they have mastered what, like, somebody from a previous era, how you're supposed to interact with social media and make people feel like, because it's people that follow Will Smith on Instagram, and they think like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? He seems so relatable. He seems like the coolest dude of all time, and that's what people yeah. want to see more than ever in this era, because social media you know what i'm saying people yeah. want to know a little bit behind the scenes stuff about you like people want to relate That's to you you know what i'm saying people want to see that and like i said i, I feel like you do a, a a really good job just by even in your content because i know you said you like to keep certain things private about your life and not revealing yeah hey yeah. here's here my mama here's my fiance you know what i'm saying but your content feels relatable it feel like we know you never talked to you this is my first time talking yeah, to you but before yeah. i did the interview i'm like man i know this nigga already you know what i'm saying never yeah. talked to you damn my life but i felt like i know you so i feel like mm-hmm. even within the content you do a really good job making people feel like oh yeah man it, 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 it little reggie right here man it, little reggie yeah. mother street you know so yeah you do like, a good job. Hey, you 30 now you 30 <laughs> yeah, i'm saying 30, what? i'm saying it like i'd have grown what? with you but you're 30 <laughs> hey, man. hey man i used to be i followed you in middle school how old are you now? In college. Dang! <laughs> I'm old as fuck, man. Damn! You let me in middle school. Dang, bruh. Damn. I'm 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 not that much. I, no, bro, we're you, you say you're 29 right now, right? Yeah, I'm 29 now. I, I, maybe it was or maybe it was late middle school, maybe it was, but I'm I'm 25, so I'm I'm not that okay. I'm not that far away okay. from you. Thank but God. um <laughs> That's funny, but um, it's funny. I, another video I forgot about um that I loved was another singing video, the Million Dollar Baby one. That was a really, really good yeah, one. Yeah, that's going crazy right now. When I see that, I do think, do after you make a video like that, do artists or labels reach out to you on some like, man, like, can you do some more songs for people from our label? Like, does that ever happen? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and and oh uh, yeah, let's talk about this. Um, so. Early on, I, I definitely had a lot of, you know, labels and artists reach out to me to, to do songs and stuff like that for them, Mr. Johnson's and stuff like that. Um, the only issue with that is some, like, I, I would do it for me liking the song, mm-hmm. right? And I sometimes have to kind of be like I'm, I'm okay only because it, it becomes a situation where at first you kind of give them the homie discount you know what I'm talking about yeah you you know you want to be a part of it so bad this is gonna um, put you on the next level it's gonna it ain't gonna do none of that shit if you don't have a good manager a good a, a good team behind you that knows what to negotiate for like you responding to the emails and if you want to be a part of it and be a part of music videos stuff like that cool i wanted to stare away from cameos because 
that wasn't getting anything what I was looking for. I was looking for more like a partnership. No, this is contract. Yeah. Your contractor. That's not, you're not building anything with that. You are just as important as the actors in the background. Mm -hmm. Right? Popping your face up is more of a benefit for them and less for you. Mm. Right? Um, same thing with, uh, you know, me doing certain, uh, like doing Wild and Out, right? Yeah. Uh, great experience for my comedy. It didn't really fit for me. I'm sure if I would have stayed on the show and maybe had a, a better rollout than what kind of mesh, what it kind of messed up to be, maybe I could have stayed on the show. But it's just interesting that like when I do brands, it's like, oh yeah, this is cool. But if I'm all wilding out, it's like, oh my God, you made it, nigga. Oh my God, you made it. Meanwhile, I've gotten paid way less to do that than I did having my own partnership with a brand sponsorship, right? Like, for me, that's bigger because it's a partnership. You're not a contractor, right? When you're on a show, Right, unless you have the leverage or you're an executive producer or producer or whatever. If you're in that realm, then of course you have a bunch of different things that you can say. You have you can you have a lot of leverage. But when you're going into that type of stuff where you're doing cameos and like you're thinking it's gonna build a relationship and stuff like that, like for me personally, it just never panned out to be that. And what happens is it's like now it's constant, like, yo, we got a new song. Yo, oh, we got a new song. What that? Meanwhile, you're getting off these $200, $300. Like, what is doing that? And you're spending hours on that when you could be just doing something that's going to be a bigger bag for you. Yeah. And it just so happened to be brand and sponsorships. But I I stay away from those because those, those relationships don't build what I'm trying to build. For sure. Right? Like, I, I want to see you, the person that's cutting checks. Right, I want to know who's the person that's, um, you know, so so I can get faces to names. That's another thing too. It's like, hey, my assistant's gonna reach out to you. Forget all that, bro. But early on, you know, I'm thinking it, it's a new thing. Everybody's. I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a a beneficial thing. But it comes, it it comes to a point where it's like we're on a hamster wheel right now. Like I've done. Six, seven songs for these motherfuckers, and that's all they ever want to see me at. Yeah, right. And that's not what I'm interested in doing. It's one of the things where you just gotta live and learn, like you said. Like you, you was that's completely it. new to it, so mm-hmm. you gonna get got a couple times. You gonna you know get got. That's another thing. People are afraid to. People are afraid to lose, man. It's, you're yeah. never losing. You're learning. You're constantly learning. Like, I, I, I give you. I'll give you one example. I uh, think this might have been around like 2016, 2017. So I wanted to like really go heavy on YouTube, like just make a bunch of skits, yeah. um, you know, make a bunch of make a make a bunch of content so I could kind of like position myself as being a YouTuber instead of being an Instagram or a Vine. So that was my goal. Um, but instead, I was like, you know what? Let me just find a producer to kind of help me put these videos together. And I trusted them to kind of help me put this together. Um, and it sounded good, you know? Like, oh, yeah, we just need you to do... We need to do X amount of videos for, you know, four videos a month. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And he was like, this is my price. I'm like, damn, that's a lot of goddamn money. <laughs> $10,000 a month mm. to do the extravagant videos. I'm thinking about lighting yeah you need dp you need uh well i was doing most of the writing and the skits and stuff like that but there's a whole crew that needs to be supported and we're doing four videos eh, that makes sense all right fuck it let's let's see how it goes right now in my mind like ten thousand is an investment Mm. right but then you come to find out oh how do you scale this Mm. Like, how do you even recoup ten thousand dollars on you? So, essentially, I would have to make at least ten million views, or 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 or, or one million views, 
each video mm -hmm. to kind of get, get that rolling. But then you start to understand that, like, you got to make better in investment decisions. Like, just because you want to do something and you think this is the right answer to do it, just understanding the the logistics of it, the finances of it. And that's what I think creators, like, you know, with, with us, we just want to create. But I think what would really open up people's mind to you have to understand how to budget and how to finance how much this stuff would cost mm -hmm. before you start going into that right now me I felt like I lost 10,000 20,000 sure but did that stop me though that is that doesn't stop me being a creative right it just means I have to scale back yeah get my get my finances in order if I want to put out a movie how much would I need to shoot this movie don't go by anybody else's number mm. that was one mistake that I did motherfucker just said 10,000 10,000 10,000 10,000 10,000 for what what are we paying for so that was my mistake so in going back to what we were talking about like people being afraid to lose or 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 being afraid that somebody's going to get you you're going to be in this grimy ass business you're going to get fucking got a lot and just because Will Smith or or I keep using him as an example but just because Adam Sandler or don't even specify what their losses are don't mean they never lost yeah. they for sure lost before Wild Wild West was terrible that's a loss but who cares, right? Look at all the other shit that he's done. Way after that, you right? live and you learn, man. You live and you learn, right? And you know, I, I just don't want people to be discouraged on losing because my fiance is like that. Like, I just want to just go out there <laughs> and just have it be done the right way the first time. You're gonna be waiting forever yeah. if you're gonna do it right, you know. I have envisions of stuff that I want to get done all the time, but I go for it, and it's not going to be everything you thought of, but the one thing that you can't say is you follow through and you finished. And you preaching, preaching. You, know? you preaching today. That's that's all that matters, because yeah. the consistency of going through that, right? Having the, uh, the doubts of, like, you're creating it, you're editing it, you're putting the light, you're putting all this together, and you're just praying, <laughs> it impacts somebody or or get the result that you want but that don't mean you just stop mm -hmm. you gotta finish through I admire people that didn't get the result that they wanted but they said that's all good I probably did something wrong let's understand what we did wrong yep. let's understand that and go back and do it again right you get at bat and you just swinging and you missing like a motherfucker. But you go you each bat, you approach it the same way every time. It gonna take that one year, that one video that gets you to what you're looking for. Then you get to understand that, like, okay, why did this get two million views? Mm. What can I do to revamp? Right? Most people just want to just shoot content, but you got to understand it like it's like you're a chemist. Yeah. Because that's, that's what it is, right? Like, I'm just, I'm not just making videos and just saying, oh, I'll hope this stick. Like, no, I did calculations of like, okay, I see why people like this video. Because obviously this is relatable. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what can we do to expand that? You know? So you just got to keep doing that over and over and over again. And if it's a new thing, got to do that. I hope everybody watching is taking notes right now. Cause like I said, you really are preaching some 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 good stuff right now. And I don't usually talk a lot, but when I do, you know, I wanna I wanna bring some type of light bulb to somebody, right? Like I don't wanna just be talking to just talk. Mm -hmm. I want people to get information. Hey, I'm glad you said it here. I'm glad you said it on my <laughs> channel, man. I, I really sure. am. I'm glad this, I'm man. glad to be on the show. I'm glad you reached out to me. Of course. Um. Because this is the type of vibe that I like, yeah. you know, not necessarily, you know, people trying to 
um, throw in some some passive aggressive shit. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but this was great, bro. Of course, this man. Excellent. If 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 you got any last words for the people out there uh, watching, man, please let it be known, man. The floor is yours. <sighs> last words. Um, I appreciate all of my supporters first and foremost. Like it has been incredible for me for you guys to keep supporting me because without you from 2015 and and even from when I started I will not be here and I'm forever grateful for that that the the opportunity that that you guys have given me yeah. um to create videos for you guys and um even seeing the comments of how many people I'm inspiring that is huge motivation for me. I'm always in my head all the time. I'm the only child, so I ain't got no brothers or anything like that. It's just really just me being in my own head and just kind of um, understanding that it's all a process. It's all, um, you know, the, thing, the things that I want to do will come. I just have to learn the lesson. So in saying that, for all the people that want to be a content creator or just want to create in general, not only did I say go for it, but go with the journey. Don't be so caught up of like the end goal. Go with whatever the journey takes you because mm. it will absolutely surprise you of the talents that you might not even know you have. People yeah. called me funny, but like I said, I was a, I'm a musician at heart, so... It just kind of combed into something to be funny. And I'm exercising a whole new creativity in my brain, right? Like, forget the music. I, I'm, I'm creative in a, in a, a comedic way as well, mm -hmm. right? So I leaned into that, and this path has just gotten me to where I am today. So just go with the journey and don't fall in love with the end result. That will be my last words for you guys. Hey man, I appreciate you coming through. For everybody watching, I appreciate it. you, Eric. Of course, for everybody watching, I you gotta do you this guys. again now. We have you can't to, just man. Do one offs. Hey man, it's so much we didn't even talk about the the classic Migo video. Like it's so much we're gonna say yeah. that. We're gonna say that for next time, man. We're um, gonna save it for next time, well, well, brother. I, I, I do got one more question before we get out of here. Who are you listening to it. right now? Like like active who, artists. Who am I listening to? Yeah, active artists. Who are you listening to? Cause I got a recommendation for you. If you're not listening to this person, they go Apple again with a thumbs up. But <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call them. I'm oh call my them. gosh! But I got a recommendation. If you're not listening to this already, but I'm, I'm gonna let you go and see if you, you you name this person. Okay. Um. A lucky day will be my one. Um. There's another person. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know if you heard of Enchanting, but she passed away. Oh, yes, like, yes. Rest in peace. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. used to listen to her heavy. She was fire. Her voice was so like, just unique. I loved her. I used to listen to her heavy. That really kind of like, damn, man. Yeah, man. Like, low key too. Like, damn, man. It's gonna bring bring me back to the that man. Yeah. I, I I just hate when stuff like that happens. Um. And I, I uh, damn, what's his name? Um, damn, what's his name? But I say, I say, my favorite artist is is Lucky Day for sure. Well, are you familiar with No Worries? No, No Worries is Anderson Pack. No, Anderson Pack, right? Yes. So Anderson Pack just dropped an album. It's him and this producer named Knowledge, and okay. together they are No Worries. They have two albums together. People have been dying for this new album. The album just came out last weekend. Amazing. So good. Probably my album right. of the year. And I'm when I when I was saying niggas don't be jamming no more, Anderson Pack is not them niggas. <laughs> Anderson Pack is jamming oh, throughout sure. this entire album. So yeah. I would say this is one of my favorite albums of the year. Their last album was my favorite album of that year. They don't miss. So it's Anderson Pack singing and knowledge producing. So that's my and Anderson yeah. Pack, man. Um one more thing for, before we get out of here. Yeah. He here's another guy that was always around, mm -hmm. right? And he finally got that shot with Bruno. And like he's in his own 
lane, like mm-hmm. a Tyler creator, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're in their own lane, right? Like when you talk about odd future, like that's a whole nother family. It's a Kid Cudi guy, yeah. you know, like they just different. That's what I'm striving to be, right? For sure. Like my supporters are a little bit different. I want my supporters to be like to to do the research yeah. and do the due diligence of like understanding the journey, right? Mm-hmm. Like, wow, like I really rock with this guy and he's my number one because of all the stuff that he's done up to this point. Right? Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Anderson Pack for sticking with it, man. Shout out you to know, Anderson. like his sound was different, but it works in the future yeah. right and he's he's been ready all this time he's so this good. is what he's been making all this time I, so. gu- I guarantee you like this album I guarantee you love this album I take that back I guarantee Bet. you love this album so there's that we're gonna leave it on that Bet. note for everybody watching I appreciate you guys until next time I say what I mean I mean what I say haters are gonna hate players are gonna play you guys holler at your boy